The Puck Portfolio with Andy McNeil. Hey, welcome to The Puck Portfolio. I'm your host, Andy McNeil. <laughs> I just choked on my coffee this morning, so that's uh, a great way to start the show. I thought I was, I thought I was going to get through it, but, uh, but apparently not. So uh, good morning. Um, I'm Andy McNeil, the host of The Puck Portfolio. I'm here on weekdays to provide NHL projections, betting advice, and strategies to help you make informed bets throughout the NHL season. Jake, my man, what's up? Oh, not too much, not too much. The uh, the last second coffee sip is a, is a skill, you know, that you develop <laughs> you, <laughs> during live broadcasts. I have not so, developed that yeah, skill. Yeah, we're, we're going to uh, develop it over 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 time. But yeah, yeah we were chatting. Can't... Uh, we were chatting before the show, kind of. Uh, Right now, I'm kind of caught up in this Otani thing uh, to Toronto. I know Toronto is not necessarily, you know, the center of the universe on this show. But uh, right now, if Otani were to land there, it would certainly be the center of the universe for baseball. I've I've always been a big baseball fan. Obviously, grew up an Expos fan, but uh, became a transplanted uh, Blue Jays fan. So, so that's fun to think about right now. Well, I mean, I, I just 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 thinking about it, just not, like right now, the first thing that comes to mind is it immediately makes the blue jays a, a worldwide brand right like they're they're all of a sudden like a, a global brand um with with a player like otani uh on their team so that that would be pretty cool but yeah no that, that keep me posted i haven't uh, obviously not following uh keeping up on the the, the baseball offseason talk but uh but of course i've been hearing uh hearing rumblings about it as well um hard to concentrate on baseball when you've got the san jose sharks Coming through for us, big, big 4-1 comeback win over the New York Islanders. Get the job done in overtime. We're going to talk about the Sharks a little bit later, but let's get into the schedule breakdown. Uh, of course, if you've been here before, which you probably have, um, this is uh, a little bit of uh, extra information for you over the next few days. We've got Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday here. Uh, the rest column tells you how many days rest teams have across the league. The load column Gives you a little bit more context, tells you if teams are playing you know, four games in six nights, three games in four nights, uh, et cetera. So we won't spend a whole lot of time on that. I factor that into my handicapping. We'll talk about it as we go through uh, game by game here. Wednesday and Thursday we'll be covering on this show. Uh, but let's get into Wednesday's projections, shall we? So it's been a hell of a run. Uh, 66 wins, 46 losses, and uh, and we've got a 16.5% return on investment. Ask your finance guy why he doesn't have a 16.5 return on investment. 20.2 uh, units of profit. Gotta love it. Really happy with the results so far. And I've got to play for, uh, for Wednesday. It's on the Florida Panthers. Currently minus 119 at North Star Bets. Uh, really a, a good price. Could have got a better price earlier um, as there was a move toward the Dallas Stars overnight. But uh, if you watch the show on Tuesday, then you know that uh, the Florida Panthers were projected as a minus 129 money line favorite. They were down around a pick on price at minus 110 uh, early, early on Wednesday morning here. Um, but now they're back up uh, at around minus 114 to minus 120 at most sports books. We'll lock in minus 119 at North Star Bets. Shop around. This is a one unit play to win one unit. It's a 1.19 units to win one unit on the Florida Panthers. Uh, you know, based on how things are looking right now here, uh, it does look like, you know, minus 119 is a, a relatively good price. Uh, you know, minus 120, minus 115. That, that's what we're seeing out there at most sports books. So, so shop around, find the best price. Uh, of course, that'll give you the best chance to win. Um, but there are a lot of good prices at North Star Bets. They sponsor this show. They offer early odds on the next day's NHL games, uh, which we will get to in a little bit here. And that helps us get out there, get the projections out there early, give you guys the best chance to win uh, each and every day. But look, this is the first half of a back-to-back -back for Dallas. The Stars are at Washington on Thursday. And I, I think shooting luck is really the only thing that's missing from this Panthers lineup. Sergey Bobrovsky is going to start for the Panthers. Their goaltending, their defense has been really good uh, this season. Great, even. Uh, and I, I think, you know, if there is a hockey god, still not sure if there is. Florida's offense uh, is going to break out soon. I mean, this is the team that really kicked off this whole offensive surge uh, back in 2021-22 when they became the top offensive team in the modern era uh, the best offensive team in, in 26 years, scoring four goals per 60 minutes. 
Uh, Florida outperformed expected goals that season, not by much. Uh, and last season, they underperformed expected goals, scoring 3.5 goals per 60 minutes, still finished fifth in scoring three goals per 60 minutes. Uh, this season, however, the Panthers, they ranked 20th on offense despite generating 3.7 expected goals per 60 minutes, which ranks fourth. So tough test tonight versus the Dallas Stars. Uh, and of course, Jake Ottinger, uh, assuming he gets the start here, of course, the, the Dallas Stars are on the first half of a back-to-back, -back, as mentioned. So there's a chance that it could be Scott Wedgwood, but we'll assume that it's going to be Jake Ottinger uh, against this tough Florida Panthers team because it is a tough matchup for the Stars as well. The model has the Panthers as a minus 129 favorite. That might seem a little high given how, you know, on the surface, this looks like a very evenly matched game. Uh, but the Panthers are the home team. That counts for something here. Uh, a team like Florida, who has not necessarily been great at home this season, but, you know, historically uh, in recent seasons has been, been really good on home ice. Uh, the Panthers, minus 129 favorite, according to the model. So I'm betting the Panthers at minus 119. Uh, definitely would shop around, find that minus 115, um, which is available at several sports books. With some sports books ticking up to as high as minus 125 now. So keep that in mind as well. Pittsburgh and Tampa Bay, first half of a back-to-back -back for the Tampa Bay Lightning at Nashville on Thursday. Uh, the Penguins, we talked about how bad their defense is on Tuesday's show. They're giving up a ton of odd man rushes. Lightning, not much better really in that regard. But um, the Penguins, just in the eye test, the, the, the data really meshes with the eye test and that the, the Penguins are not a good defensive team. They've been really propped up by their goaltending in that regard. Tristan Jari, even Alex Nedeljkovic uh, have both been good this season. Um, Nedeljkovic was, was unreal against the Flyers. I mean, he made some several 10-bell saves uh, against the Philadelphia Flyers, who had uh, a handful of odd man rushes. Travis Konechny was everywhere in that game. Um, but, of course, this is a revenge spot for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, they blew a 2-0 lead against the Pittsburgh Penguins last week. And, you know, they'll be looking uh, to get back at the Penguins as they got back at the Stars. Lost 8-1 to Dallas a few days later, beat the Stars for zip. So the Lightning, they've always been a team that can, you know, is capable of bouncing back. They're a minus 135 favorite right now, according to North Star Bets. According to the projection model, they should be minus 123. So pretty much right on the money there. No play on the Lightning or the Penguins. Uh, the Blues and, <clears throat> sorry, did I have minus 123? No, I think I was looking at the wrong game. My apologies. Uh, let me just get situated here. Minus 128, according to the projection model uh, for the Tampa Bay Lightning. So small value on the Lightning, I guess. Not any uh, anywhere close enough to uh, justify making a bet here. The St. Louis Blues plus 124 underdogs, according to the projection model. Another revenge spot here for the Vegas Golden Knights, who lost 2-1 in Vegas uh, in the shootout or in, in extra time uh, against the St. Louis Blues. believe that one ended in overtime. Can't recall, um, but it was extra time. And uh, and Vegas will be looking to get back on track here, right? So um, I don't know. The, the Golden Knights, they rank 13th in expected goals percentage, top half of the league in all situations. The Blues, they rank 18th. But... There, there's not a big gap here at Vegas. They're obviously the better team. They've got a 57.6% goal share uh, and they've got an even higher ceiling than that. Um, but this is a, a, like I said, a revenge spot for, for BGK, but uh, I'm, it's going to be blues or nothing for me right now. It's nothing. Um, but I don't think the gap is as, uh, as big as, as the market might think as some people might think. And uh, I think the blues showed that uh, over the weekend with the win over the Vegas golden Knights. And finally, Carolina at Edmonton. This is the first half of a back-to-back -back for Carolina. They're at Calgary on Thursday. The Edmonton Oilers back after a five-day break. So there's a four-day rest advantage here for the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, like I said on Wednesday's show, though, or Tuesday's show, sorry, um, four days rest, five days rest, that, that's when you start getting into the rust uh, territory. So you got to be careful of the Oilers here. Um, minus 110, according to the, minus 109, sorry, according to the projection model. Uh, and that's basically what we're seeing. Minus 110 on each side at North Star Bets currently for the Hur Hurricanes and the Edmonton Oilers. But yeah, we're going to get into Thursday, December 7th right away here. We'll pull out the projections. 
Uh, Jake, do we got anything in the chat today? I know it's a light day in the NHL. Maybe, maybe people are going to take a little bit of time getting to this episode, but uh, just wondering if we've got anything to get to. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you mostly covered it that the Blues, um, the Blues uh, Vegas Knights game is a little closer than people expect. Chris in the chat uh, finding the Blues at uh, plus one forty five. I assume you wow. would, uh, you would, uh, you would take that run. Yeah, yeah. Look, and look, you're you're right. It's coming up there now. Plus one forty five, plus one forty. This has just happened in the last um, last little bit here. Let me just pull up the line history. So. Yeah. Took a little bit for the rest of the market to catch up, but they are big move towards the Vegas Golden Knights. Let's see what is available here. Yeah, let's lock in the Blues at plus 145. Uh in addition to the Florida Panthers um for uh for Wednesday's games. Um, you know you're going to get a better effort from Vegas, but this this price here, uh, really really too good to pass up. <clears throat> one unit play on the St. Louis Blues at plus one forty five, and uh, let's just hope that we didn't miss anything uh, as far as injury news or anything like that. Does not look like it. Jordan Bennington expected to start versus Vegas. He's eight six and one, nine fourteen save percentage, one shutout. 9.7 goals saved above expected year to date for Jordan Bennington. So that's pretty good, right? Hate the guy, really, but uh, but I mean he's playing good. We'll take it. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so blues over the Vegas Golden Knights. So two plays for Wednesday's four-game NHL slate. The Florida Panthers minus 119 to win one unit, uh, and the St. Louis Blues plus 145. Shop around for that one. One unit to win 1.45 units. So let's keep this train rolling. 20.2 units of profit. Hopefully we don't go backwards here on Wednesday. But we've got Thursday too. And there is a lot of hockey action on Thursday, December 7th. We'll start with the Buffalo Sabres taking on the Boston Bruins. The Sabres, they're playing their fourth game in six days. The Bruins, they're coming off a rested stretch, having three days off. Uh, the Sabres, they were booed off their home ice uh, after the first period on Tuesday, falling behind two zip to the Detroit Red Wings. Detroit went, went up 4-0 before Buffalo scored three unanswered goals uh, to tease a comeback because it was a tease. They lost 5-3. Buffalo is now 1-11 straight up when trailing at the end of the first period this season. Boston has outscored teams 23-14 to 14 in the first period this season. So the Sabres really do not have room to make any mistakes in this one. They have just four wins in their last 12 games. Really, really tough matchup here for the Sabres. Um, Boston Bruins minus 228, according to the projection model, plus 228 on the other side for the Buffalo Sabres. I mean, maybe we're not high enough here on the Boston Bruins. Because we're seeing that Savers price creep up here a little bit. Um, plus 225 at one sports book. As low as plus 180 at another, though. So there is some value on the Bruins, depending on where you shop around. No value on the Sabres here. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see. We'll talk about that one a little more maybe on Thursday. The Toronto Maple Leafs at the Ottawa Senators. We just learned that the, the Maple Leafs called up Martin Jones because Ilya Samsonov dealing with the flu bug, he is too weak to uh, to join the team again for this one. So, yeah, looks like we'll see Joseph Wall against the Ottawa Senators. Um, four days off for the Maple Leafs, so they are rested. The Sens, they've only got one day's rest. Uh, but Ottawa looked really good against the Rangers, much to my chagrin. Uh, not happy about that one. The Rangers cost me uh, what would have been a really good night. Um, but thankfully, what would have been a really bad night was uh, was saved by the, the San Jose Sharks. Not a really bad night, but it would have been a losing night. But the Sharks came back and, and saved the day. That's why I'm wearing the Sharks hat today. We're going to talk about the Sharks right away. But yeah, the Maple Leafs, four days off, a little bit rusty possibly against the Sens team who is uh, maybe feeling it right now. Uh, the Maple Leafs. According to the projection model, should be a minus 142 favorite. And um, that means 
that there is some value on the Maple Leafs at minus 132. And uh, I've just got to double check something here, though, because I could have swore that I had Toronto. No, it's minus 142. So, uh, so yeah, I guess I'm, uh, I guess I'm betting against the Senators um, <laughs> again, which is uh, which is unfortunate because uh, because they they haven't been treating me well lately. Eh? They, you know that the Sens have uh, have have been proving me wrong as of late. And, uh, you know, this one doesn't feel great, but you know what? Let's lock it in for uh, a half unit play on the the Toronto Maple Leafs. Jake, we've got a rematch with the Montreal Canadiens, the Los Angeles Kings. Of course, uh, the Kings streak of nine straight regulation wins on the road came to an end on Tuesday, but they are still undefeated as the visitors uh, one day rest advantage for the Canadians who were shut out by the Kings back on uh, November 25th in Los Angeles. What do you, what are you thinking about this one? Probably much of the, much of the same. Yeah. I imagine it's going to be pretty similar. I mean, obviously Montreal's at home now and they're going to be thinking about that last game, but you know, the Kings handled them so well uh, in LA, they just kind of locked it down and, and trapped them to death. So uh, I don't expect much different, you know, maybe Montreal manages a goal or two uh, instead of being shut, shut out, but uh, don't have a ton of faith in them uh, getting that revenge. Yeah. So locked in uh, a half unit play to win a half unit on the Toronto Maple Leafs for Thursday's slate. And, uh, and we're going to move on and talk about the San Jose Sharks right away because they got another big win on Tuesday. As I mentioned, it was, uh, it was a fun one. The Sharks were down 4-1. They stormed back. They tied the game 4-4. They get it into overtime. And they, and they come out with the big win. The Sharks closed plus 268 on the money line. The New York Islanders were a minus 311 money line favorite. That implies that they've got a, a 75 plus percent chance of winning that game. But the Sharks, they buck that trend. And when you look at how this has gone for the San Jose Sharks this last month, now since getting blown out by the Pittsburgh Penguins here on November 4th, the Sharks are 7-7-1 and one in their last 15 games. If you had bet $100 on the Sharks to win each of those 15 games on the money line, you would be up $959 right now. On the other side of that, if you had bet the Sharks' opponents to win each of those games at $100 a pop, you'd be down $421. So, yeah, this team is bad. Everybody knows that. The Sharks are... Arguably the worst team in the NHL. They're catching up. They're not anymore, actually. They caught the Chicago Blackhawks, who are now in 32nd place, um, if I recall correctly. Let me just double check that so that we can edit that out and we can make a proper, you know, short here. <laughs> because I thought that was the case last night. If the if the San Jose Sharks won, they would not be in last place. So I'm just going to look that up right now. Uh why would it look weird? NHL.com. Why would it bring me to 2022, 20, 23? Yeah, the Chicago Blackhawks. They're one point behind the San Jose Sharks. So the Sharks are no longer the worst team in the NHL. And if you're blindly fading this team, if you're blindly betting against them, then you, you really don't have a clue. This is a, 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 an NHL team for sure. Um, they're not going to keep winning at this rate. They're not going to win 50% of their games going forward. I mean, we're talking about a team that... Uh, according to the betting market, is expected to win somewhere between 25 and 30 percent of their games, whether they're on the road or they're playing at home. So the Sharks just just cleaning up lately. You're almost up a thousand dollars if you've been betting a, a one hundred dollar unit size on the Sharks uh, over this last month. Of course, nobody's in their right mind is, is doing that every every single game. But there are spots to bet on this team like we showed on Tuesday. Big price versus the Islanders come through with the win. Uh, and and somebody asked the other day, you know, do you, do, you, do, you, do you play the puck line plus one and a half on these games? No, I don't. I play the money line. And typically, I've got a bigger edge uh, in the money line market. So that's what I'm going to play. Uh, as far as this game goes, of course, the big story here is Patrick Kane. He's likely going to make his Detroit Red Wings debut. 
Everybody knows that's going to happen, though. And if you have any idea how betting markets work, sure, there might be another big push towards the Red Wings here when the public jumps on fading the San Jose Sharks as they have over the last month. Think of how many parlays the Sharks have busted over that month. They've been a, a, a total a total annihilation uh, of a, a total parlay annihilator, sorry, of uh, for public betters just just throwing the Sharks on there, hoping or throwing the Sharks opponents on there, hoping that their odds will get boosted a little bit. But, you know, this team is not that bad that they should be a, a fade every night of the week. The Islanders shouldn't be a minus 311 favorite against anybody. So let's just get that straight right now as if you want to know where I think the Islanders are. But as far as this game goes, the Sharks and the Red Wings, uh, if anything, there's a little bit of value on Detroit out there right now. I would not necessarily make that bet. Um, it's uh, not widely available. It's actually only one. No, it's only one sports book, and it's an Ontario sports book. So screw you, Ontario. Um but yeah, the Sharks. I mean, don't don't just blindly bet against this team. Don't just throw the their, their opponents on a parlay because you think it's an easy an easy winner on a leg on a parlay leg. It's not the case. Uh, only a sucker would uh, would do that at this point. Only a sucker has been doing that. So come on, guys, be better, be better. Uh, anyways, anyway, the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, at the Nashville Predators. I'm going to have to make a play on the Predators here, I think, because North Star Bets currently plus 107. Um, the, the Obviously, the Lightning in action against the Penguins tonight. We already know Andre Vasilevsky is starting, or at least it looks like he is going to start, uh, expected to start. Uh, he was the first goaltender off the ice for uh, the Lightning at practice. So that means it's probably going to be Jonas Johansson uh, in action against the uh, Predators on Thursday, second half of a back-to-back, one unit to win 1.07 units on the Nashville Predators at plus 107. So we're adding, just to recap here, uh, we've got three, two bets for Friday, Toronto, Minus 132 to win a half unit to beat those pesky Ottawa Senators and the Tampa Bay Lightning Thursday. Sorry, my days are mixed up. Got my days mixed up. Too many days. Let's just make it all one day. Let's just, you know, I don't know. Day one day and just use numbers. You know, we don't need we don't need to get too complicated here. Uh, Nashville plus 107 to beat the Lightning on Thursday. Um, Hopefully. You get Jonas Johansson on Thursday and and Vasilevsky against the Penguins on Wednesday. So really not a lot to to break down there. This is a, a you know a situation where some of these sports books put up the lines for both games on the on the back to backs, uh, like the Lightning are in uh, on Wednesday and Thursday. Um, they do so projecting that the starting goaltender will be uh, in goal for both of those games typically. Um, because you see a, a big change usually when the goaltending uh, situation becomes more clear and we'll likely see a big move towards the Predators here uh, or we'll see some of these other sports books open up with the Predators as a, a shorter uh, at a shorter price, uh, maybe a short favorite even. Um, the model has the Nashville Predators at minus 105. So a short favorite, 51.1% chance of winning uh, on Thursday against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Anaheim and Chicago, it's the fourth game in six days uh, for the, the Chicago Blackhawks. They'll play their sixth game in nine days with a back with back-to-back games against St. Louis and Washington coming up this weekend. So they're in the midst of a really tough stretch of hockey. And uh, and I don't really quite get the, the line here, the opening line on the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, minus 104. Uh, at North Star Bets, they should be a bigger favorite. The projection model has the Ducks at minus one. What's going on with Trevor Zegers, by the way? He's just uh, he's just disappeared, fell off the face of the earth. I thought it was going to be a you know a, a minor injury. Um, still haven't seen him for a, a while now. So uh, minus one hundred four, gonna lock that in to win one unit on the Anaheim Ducks. Let me just drink a sip of coffee here. That's better. Um, so yeah, one more play 
for Thursday. Just kind of taking my time here going through things because there is a lot to get through. Um, don't want to gloss over anything. Obviously, we'll have uh, uh, another chance to catch up on everything on Thursday, but this is the time when we hope to find the most value. So I've got another bet locked in. That's the third bet for Thursday. Anaheim minus 104 on the money line to beat the Chicago Blackhawks. And, uh, and yeah, things are coming along here nicely. So, Nashville, Anaheim, and Toronto. And now, one more that you guys have uh, probably been uh, been expecting. The Columbus Blue Jackets. They're in action against the Islanders in New York. First half of a back-to-back for Columbus. They're playing St. Louis on Friday. Would expect it to it would be Elvis Merzlikens against the Islanders uh, on Thursday. Spencer Martin on Friday versus the Blues. Uh, there's really not a lot separating these two teams, which sounds crazy to say, but in all situations, the Isles uh, are the 26th team in expected goals percentage, 27th in shot attempt percentage, 23rd in goal share. The Blue Jackets, they're 30th in expected goals percentage, really bad. 23rd in shot attempt percentage, though, and 25th in goal share. So it really would not be surprising or all that shocking to see the Blue Jackets come in and, and outplay, outshoot the Islanders. And, and that's, I think that's just it, right? It, this this Islanders team leaves too much up to luck. When you play break-even hockey, i.e. 50-50 in shots and expected goals in, in most games or worse, uh, or a little bit better variance is going to destroy you. And it can, it, it pretty much has destroyed the Islanders uh, this season. This team cannot hold on to a lead. They've led uh, in so many games. Uh, of course, Patrick line, missed Tuesday's game with an illness, but would expect him to be back in illnesses do not usually keep players out for very long. So going to lock in the blue jackets here at plus plus one seventy five, one unit play on the blue jackets to win 1.75 units at North star bets. Uh, that is the best price in market right now. That is the fourth bet for Thursday. Uh, yeah, Thursday is going to be a, a big day. A Toronto minus 132 to win 0. 0.5 units. Columbus plus 175. One unit to win 1.75 units. One unit on the Nashville Predators to win 1.07 units at plus 107. And one unit to win one unit on the Anaheim Ducks. At minus 104, 1.04 units to win one unit. Um, God, I sound like Scott Steiner when I talk numbers. Try not to do it as much as possible. Jake, do we got anything uh, to get to? Any updates that you uh, have come across by chance? Not too, too much. Chris, uh, a little earlier, was asking what you use uh, to monitor line history, monitor line movements. Um, I use a, a few different apps here. It used to, used to be a Don best guy, but I mean, those days are done. I'm not going to pay 500 bucks a month for, uh, or more, I guess that's, that's, I'm talking American dollars, but, um, no, I use, uh, I use several different, uh, websites. I'm sure, uh, Chris is familiar with all of them. Um, I will, uh, I will get, uh, I will get to him. I will give him some recommendations in the DMS, but, uh, but yeah. Um, there are, uh, of course I've got my own database. I, I log line history, uh, and things like that for past odds. As far as the current day's odds, uh, though, I am uh, monitoring several different sports books. Um, and yeah, it certainly helps. You've got to have outs. You've got to have, uh, an easy way to compare odds. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that, uh, that certainly, certainly helps. Just, just checking on some updates here because I uh, don't want to, uh, don't want to miss anything. A lot of, a lot of breaking news during this time. Um, <clears throat> as far as the Wednesday games go, I know we're talking about Thursday right now, but got to keep an eye on things for Wednesday because things can change fast. So, yeah, four bets locked in for Thursday. Just going to double check and see if there is anything else worth talking about or locking in right now. Um, you know what? I guess we could lock in. 
A small bet. Yeah, it's going to be a small bet. Assuming the price has not changed. At plus 117 on the Philadelphia Flyers. I think these two teams are, are evenly matched. Uh, but I've got the Flyers rated slightly higher than the Arizona Coyotes. There's enough value here to justify risking 0.5 units on the Philadelphia Flyers to beat the Arizona Coyotes at Mullet Arena on Thursday. Uh, and as far as the early bets go, that's going to be my final bet for Thursday. Um, so let's just recap everything here. Thursday, St. Louis plus 145. Oh, no, sorry. The days. Man, I, I need like a sticker on the front that says today is Wednesday. Tomorrow is Thursday. Wednesday, St. Louis Blues plus 145 on the money line. Looking for them to get another win over the Vegas Golden Knights. One unit to win 1.45 units. 1.19 units to win one unit on the Florida Panthers at minus 119 to beat the Dallas Stars on Wednesday. Moving on to Thursday now, the Toronto Maple Leafs minus 132 uh, to win 0.5 units. So 0.66 unit bet to win 0.5 units. The Columbus Blue Jackets, one unit to win 1.75 units, betting them on the money line to beat those Islanders. Those dreadful New York Islanders at plus 175. The Tampa Bay Lightning, they're in Nashville taking on the Preds. I've got the Preds on the money line at plus 107. That's a one-unit play. The Anaheim Ducks, they're minus 104 on the road in Chicago taking on the Blackhawks. The worst team in the NHL, 1.054 units to win one unit on the Anaheim Ducks. And the Philadelphia Flyers, half-unit play to beat the Coyotes at plus 117 to win point. Five nine units that pretty much does it for us today on the puck portfolio it's been a good run hopefully wednesday and thursday will be profitable days but uh we built up a good cushion that you know we can uh we can take a swing here every once in a while and, and it looks like wednesday and thursday we are taking a pretty big swing with seven bets between those two days in total jake you got anything you want to add before we get out of here? Uh, no, let's just, I'll just say it. Here's to, here's to that Otani announcement coming in soon. Uh, good luck with your bets, everybody. Thank you. Uh, of course, for tuning in. Happy, uh, happy Wednesday out there. Hump day. Like the video, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Helps out a ton. Hit the 1200 subscriber mark this morning. So thank you for that. Really appreciate it. Uh, but, yeah, your comments, your likes, your shares, especially on Facebook, Twitter, uh, wherever else you, you talk to people at, share this show, get the word out. We are going to be back on Thursday, of course, picking up any uh, any slack that was, uh, was left here uh, as far as the Thursday schedule, looking ahead to Friday, uh, and then getting set for Friday's big show because it, it is going to be a big, big show on Friday. We'll be looking ahead to Saturday's big NHL slate providing projections, picks, etc. for you all on Friday, 9:30 a.m. Uh, sorry, 8:30 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, 11:30 a.m. Eastern time, right here on the Canada Sports Betting YouTube channel and wherever you get your podcast. But that does it for us today on the Puck Portfolio. See you on Thursday. Good luck with your bets and take care.